um, energy impacts, start layering all this on. Um, energy use, with doing advanced light sources, design strategies, and controls, you can save off the top 25 to 50%. Add daylighting to that, so you can actually really reduce the lighting. You can have that again, and take into account the health benefits of doing lighting well. So there's a lot of stuff, and I just want to show you, because I know we're about 15 minutes over, one project, so just, this is going to go through pretty quickly. I'm going to go to USGBC headquarters. And what we did there, oh yeah, we did the Empire State Building. Reduced lighting. Okay, USGBC headquarters. Washington, D.C., of course, we have controlled the heck out of this. And yes, the ease of controls was huge. We put an IP address on every single light, every receptacle, every load in the building we have an IP address on. And we can control it, change it on the software. Um, second thing we had was that we needed, we couldn't have light shelves or anything. So one of my brilliant daylighting designers um, Decide to use the carpeting as a light shelf. So around the perimeter, have light carpeting. Bounces light off and up into the space. and does actually better than the higher up light shelves for bouncing light. We designed for 0.5 watts a square foot. That includes the task lighting. It's not just the overhead lighting. And the energy used over the summer in real time energy is 0.25 um, kilowatts per hour, over 75% energy reduction. This is how you're going to get to net zero. Reducing your load immediately, more than anything else. 